Good morning and welcome this morning to our Sunday morning service. And today you are in the company of Stanley and my wife Karen. I'll be ministering English and she'll be ministering Afrikaans. Goedemorgen allemaal, loof die Heere, wat die heerlijkheid om hier volgend hier te kan wees. Die naam van die Heere te kan groot maak, sy woord te mag bedien. Sjoo, dit is altyd so'n voorrecht vir ons. En ons loof die Heere daarvoor. Wees welkom volgend, share dit daar na jou tijdlijn toe, share dit op jou status. Wanneer ek het daar na WhatsApp toe stuur, die link, en dan kan allemaal ook deel wees daarvan op jou WhatsApp. En ek kan vir jy sê, dit is een geweldige, goeie, toe om te gebruik om die evangelie te verkondig, want elkeen op jou adresboek kan weet dat dit is waarmee jy bezig is en baie mense gaan kyk en baie mense raak deel en baie mense kontak ons as gevolg van mense wat het op hulle status deel so loof die heren, wees deel volgend, geniet het Wees welkom, loof die Heere, en deel ook in die boodskap vir oogend. Yes, amen, as we are giving the opportunity for everybody to tune in, please share, share the message there to your Facebook timeline, as well as on your WhatsApp status. It is a very, very effective to share it there on your WhatsApp status as well. Afterwards, we do upload our video on our YouTube channel with the same name, same name as here on Facebook as well as on our WhatsApp. We share the audio there of this message. That's only afterwards as well as on Telegram. But all the other platforms aren't live streaming. Only Facebook is live streaming um, at this moment and point in time. So good morning. Heartfelt welcome, 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 welcome. Amal as a belief daily boerskap down your tightline to. WhatsApp status to baie effectief om dit te doen, om so die woord van die Heere te verspreid, te verkondig, uit te dra, te deel met ander, halleluja. If we have the love of God, of Christ in our heart, we must have the love to share the message so that other people can be saved. This is why Jesus Christ came. He didn't come in public in the secret and in secret and in private. He came in public. He made himself known. At the end of the day, the word of God says he was made a spectacle, a reproach for people. He permitted people to slander him, to curse him, to mock him. And in that he never retaliated, he never hit back at people. He just gave forgiveness. Hallelujah. And this is the great thing in the Evangelie that the Jesus Christ has given him, that he has spotted, that he has said, that he has said to him. He has been still and has been in the love. He has not done it in the private, he has done it openly. Gedoen. En so moet ons as kinders van die Heere, as ons sê ons het die liefde van God en Christus in ons leven, moet ons ons self oopmaak, ons moet ons harte oopmaak, jy moet jou Facebook page oopmaak, jy moet jou WhatsApp status oopmaak, jy moet jou leven oopmaak vir die evangelie van die Heere Jesus Christus. Patie keer sê ons, Heere, ek kan nie hierdie ding in my leven oorwin nie, ek kan nie die ding in my leven oorwin nie, dan is ons skaam, ons sikkel, ons sikkel om die shirt noppie te druk op Facebook, om ons Facebook oop te maak, vir ander om te sien waarmee ons is bezig, om ons WhatsApp oop te maak, vir ander om te sien waarmee ons is bezig, en dan soek ons oorwinning, ons soek verlossing, maar ons is eindelijk skaam, vir die evangelie, ons is te lei om net die ou knoppie te druk, wat sê share, en ons moet om druk, halleluja, so dat die wereld, as die liefde van Christus in my hart is, dan moet ek die evangelie van liefde, van kracht, van waarheid, van heerlijkheid deel met die wereld, halleluja, want Jesus het nie in die privaat gekom nie, hy het nie in die privaat gesterf nie, hy het homself openbaar gemaakt, en so kan ons ook help, dat die evangelie verder geopenbaar kan word, want God gebruik ons, om die evangelie te verkondig, en as ons het vir ons self hou, dit is die duisternis, dit is die donkerte, en dan kan, as skyn die licht nie in ons hart, so dat die kracht van God in ons leven wat geopenbaar kan word, the power of salvation, halleluja we must open our facebook we must open our whatsapp we must open our life, halleluja this is a way to share the gospel, just to hit that share button, sometimes we are just too lazy or too ashamed, just to 
tap a button, <laughs> share. How, how difficult is that? Yeah. And if we really have the love of God and Christ in our heart, hallelujah, then we will want to share the gospel that so much more people can be set free. Amen. Praise the Heere. The Heere make us lost. The Heere make us free. Yes, amen. This is the power of God to redden. And when we make our lives open, when we make our hearts open and open, for the Heere, we make our eyes open, so that the light in come, so that the darkness can go. That is the power of God to redden in our lives, for losing, free making. Then we get a new life, a new mood, when the word must our mood for ander vernieuwe en baie keer weet ons dat wanneer ons die waarheid gaan deel met ander gaan ek vervolging kry gaan ek nie weer geliefd wees nie en dit is waarom ons baie keer dit terughou weer hou van baie mense want ons besef dat as mense moet sien wat ons kyk gaan hulle ons vermy yes. en dit is wat juist moet gebeur ons met die selfde pad stap as Jesus Christus want hy het vir ons die voorbeeld kom stel maak los maak vry van hier die wereld en dien hom loof die Here yes amen hallelujah so we we must open our heart. We must open our life. We must open the doors of our heart, yeah. of our life, so that the light can shine in. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ is the light. And he says, we must be light bearers. Amen. So if you share, this is one way. There's a lot of ways, but this is one way. This morning we are gathered together as a congregation yes. and this is now this point where you can shine your light to the world is by sharing also this message so that other people can also be set free and receive answers and become Born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Prijs die Heere. Die hele wereld moet gered word. Dit yes, is ons hart. Amen. En dis kom ons die Heere dien. Is so dat siele gered moet word. Nie vir ons self. Nie. Yes, amen. Is so dat siele gered kan word. Dier ons getuienis. Dier die woord wat ons bedien. Dier amen. dit wat ons uitdra. Kan daar baie gered yes, word. Loof die Heere. En as baie wat op soek is na die waarheid. Ek kan vir sê oor ons. Oh. Is mense op soek na die waarheid. En wanneer hulle op het afkom. Dan sal hulle so opgewonde. En um, dan kan hulle sommer hulle harte met die Heere raag maak. Ons het vrijdag een geval gehad. Yes. Wow, daar het loods wel uit. Het een man van my laaf in ons gekontak. Prijs die Heere. En hy het net sy hart oopgebreek oor die telefoon. <laughs> hy het net gehoor van hierdie kerk en hierdie bediening en al hierdie dinge. En hy was in die katholieke kerk en toe die methodist kerk. Nee. Ja. En hy het verstaan nie gekontak en gesê, maar hy wil sy hart vir die Heere gee. Hy wil sy saak recht maak. En sommer so twee uur vrijdag maandag, jo, te maak hy sy hart op en hy gee sy hart vir die Heere. En hy sê, dit gaan goed met hom en sy hart het soms so opgebreek en die gees vir die Heere ontvang. Want hy sê, ewe skielik en hy weet niks van die dinge nie. Hy sê, ewe skielik, besef hy sommer wat hy verkeerd gedoen het en hy beleid het en hy sorteer sy hart uit. Jo, dit is die kracht van God tot redding. Amen. Dit is die waarheid van die woord wat losmaak en vrymaak. Is dit nie amazing nie? Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank the Lord. If we can embrace what God has given us and yes. the Lord has given Anshin a work, a job there at the library in Lutzville. And this yes. man came there because they've got PCs with the internet, etc. And he came there and I started talking. That's now for a while. And the next moment Anshin said, no, contact these people and he will pray with you. And he, God sent him all the way from Malawi wow. to Lutzville so that he can hear the gospel. And in his way of talking, he I could have understand from him. He said he were there and he were there. And there was something lacking. That is, yeah. He knew something was wrong, but he couldn't lay his hand on it, put his finger on it. And when we spoke to him, hallelujah, he just received the truth of the gospel. I spoke oh, to him man. yesterday as well, and he says he's just praying, and uh, um, he will contact us. So if the Lord willing, please pray for us. Yes. We need to get back to Lutzville. <laughs> <laughs> to baptize. <laughs> yes, to, to minister to the person and talk to him about the baptism, etc., etc., so that the Lord can really break, give that final breakthrough in yes. his heart. Because he wants to join the ministry, he wants to be part of the ministry, he wants wow. to follow the ministry. So praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pray for us, with us, so that we can also get back there Amen. and also minister to him the gospel of our yes. Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. So the Peter's warning, they've got a lot of work in Lutzville. And there's yes. other people that also came to the Lord. There's other people that are busy counting the cost. So that the Lord will also give them yes. wisdom to guide 
people to the Lord as well. Hallelujah. And encourage Christ them here. in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Om volgende aan te denken. Ons is opgewonnen als gemeente bed voor ons dat die Heere vir ons pad maak, loof die Heere. Amen, halleluja. And this morning we're going to have communion, the Lord's Supper. Um, and, um, but first, uh, first of all, we're going to open with prayer. A normal uh, um, way of doing the service when we have communion. We first are having um, Holy Communion uh, or Lord's Supper. For everybody to do it live with us, yes. and then afterwards we minister the word. minister the word. Yes, <laughs> yes <thank laughs> the <you>. message. <laughs> um, ja, so kry jou nachtmal goedkies gereed. Ons gaan eerste volgende nachtmal bedien. En um, baie mense het nie baie data nie, so dan doen ons het eerste, so dat yes. allemaal kan deel hy daar aan. En daarna gaan ons dan die woord wat ons voorbereid het vir veroogend, die opgewonde woord uit. Uh, uh, heerlijke woord, maar ook joh, hier is soveel bekering wat moet plaasvind in die hart alweer, van gister was het net bekering op bekering in my hart gewees, uitsorteer en um, so ja, ons geloof volgend sal die woord u ook so vry en losmaak, loof die heren yes, I see ancient two weeks <laughs> <laughs> oor twee weke pro ons kos is weer lekker ek en Gam sê die kos pro nie meer so lekker soos toe jylle hier was nie, yeah. so jylle het so besluit twee weke, <laughs> ok yes so for now it's two weeks but we'll yes. see, okay. cause we want to get there when Gam is not working cause he's yes. working shifts so I think, uh, but we will arrange with them, and when he is not in chef, then we can go through. Praise the Lord. Yes, Heere. hallelujah. Uh-huh. There's the helmets. Ancient is the helmets. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So let's open with prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, who is our mediator, who is a, who, who Father came down to earth, your Son, to give His life, so that we can be set free from the bondage, from yeah, the power yeah. of darkness, from the rulership of Satan in our life, Father. And I thank you for your obedience, Lord Jesus, that you never heed in one second to any sin. Yeah. You never heeded to the desires and the sinful lust of this world. Sometimes when I think of it, I can't, I can't even comprehend what it is to be 33 and a half years on earth and never ever sure. you had one single thought of sin and desire of sin f- and gave heed to the, the, to the inclinations and desires of the flesh. Yeah. Father, not for one moment, Lord Jesus, you gave heed to it. And so when the day when, it, when you were on the cross, you could have died and went down into Hades and set the captives free. And not them alone, but us as well. Now that we can believe in your name, we can receive the Holy Spirit uh, through your Son, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. It is your Spirit, it is your life. And I thank you, Father, that this morning we are really dependent on your Spirit We are dependent on your wisdom. We are dependent on your guidance through the power of your Holy Spirit this morning to minister the word, Father, so that we all can receive deliverance, that we all can receive, Father, hallelujah, to be set free from this world and the things of this world, that we can understand something this morning. We need to understand. Sometimes there's just something that we just don't understand. We don't click it, Father. And this morning, I want to pray, and I want to ask you, Father, help my wife and myself, that we can minister the word in such a way this morning that it can be understandable, and Father, and that you can set us free, and that you can help us, so that the burden of this world can fall from our shoulders, and from our mind, and from our heart. And that we can serve you in spiritual freedom and truth and power and glory 
in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to pray for those that are ill. We are specifically thinking of Dani this morning, Dani and Marty. Yeah, yeah. Father, while Dani had this diagnosis of his body and yeah, there's big decisions they had to make, Father, and mm. I ask you that you will guide them. And oh, like Marty amen. said, you have carried them so far and thus far, and you can also provide further in their bodily members while yeah, they are, yeah. while while the, while they are sick and ill, and if they have infirmities in their body, and especially Dani, I want to pray and Marty as well, Father. Yes. Hallelujah. On the, in the uh, uh, old age, Father, it's not an easy decision to make, Father, for operations, etc. And I ask mm. that you will guide, that you will lead, and that yeah, you will yeah, yeah. reveal yourself to them this morning. Please, Father, Possibly, we come yeah. in humble, Father, hallelujah, adoration of, for you, Lord, hallelujah. We come to you. We are really in need of an, an answer and guidance for, uh, from you in this uh, way as well. And I thank you, Father, and I glorify your holy name that you are the God that sustains. You are the God that answers. Yes. You are the God, hallelujah, that guide our footsteps. Uh, we can plan our way, but when we are dependent on thee, when we humble ourselves, when we call upon your name, uh, hallelujah, and we are your children, and then you will guide our footsteps. You will help us, yeah. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, thank hallelujah. You, I thank you, Father, and want to pray for others that are ill this morning, yeah, yeah. that have sickness this morning uh, that you will also reveal yourself and that you will heal and yeah, that you will also you. carry them through please father we are dependent on yes, your mercy we I are mean. dependent on your guidance we are dependent on your answer this morning father and you encourage us through your word that we should never slack that we should endure that we should Carry forth and on and keep the faith oh, and start yeah. and keep seeking thee in every situation and in every way possible. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. We want to bring this burdens this morning to you because you, Father, are looking after us. You, Father, sustain us. You help us, Father. Who else can help us I except swear, you? Yeah. And I thank you, Father that you will help each and every one who calls out in their heart, with their mouth, oh, with man. their mind this morning and say, yes. Lord, please help me. I cannot bear this load anymore. I need deliverance, Father. I need deliverance. I need healing. I need, Father, you to come through for me in this morning. And I thank you, Father. Help us this morning so that we can minister the word in spirit Amen. and truth in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you that you will help us. Thank you, Lord, that you will help us. Yes, Amen. 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 Jere, dis verlossing, dis vryheid, jere, en ons dankie vir oogend, dat ek en my man dit so kan, jere, bedien, vader, terwyl jy al klaar diep in ons harte gepraat en gedeel het, jere, terwyl ons harte al self klaar moes uitsorteer en dinge moes verstaan, jere, yes. help ons het vir oogend om het verstaanbaar te kan oordra, jere, dit wat so diep in ons harte getref het, yes, jere, amen. en ons dankie, vader, in die krachtige naam van jy sien, Jesus Christus, dat jy ons net help vir oogend, jere, Ek roep uit vir weisheid en inzicht, jyre, so dat jy my kan help en kan lei volgend vir my man, jyre, asseblief, vader, ons sê vir jy so baie dankie, in Jesus naam. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, first of all, we're going to have communion. And um, if you have your Bibles with you, please read with me in your Bible. Um. Uh, I remember our previous uh, communion, we, the Lord guided us and we really elaborated on a lot of things in, in a communion, the purpose, the reason, the blood, the bread, etc. And this morning we're just going to serve the communion. Hallelujah. So if you have your bread and your grape juice, you can get it ready. 
I'm going to read a scripture to you. We're going to do it in English and also in Afrikaans. And uh, we're going to read in 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23 up till verse um, 26. So it's 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23 up till verse 26. For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this to my, to my in remembrance of me. In the same manner he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26. Want ek het van die Heere ontvang wat ek ook aan julle oorgelever het, dat die Heere Jesus in die nacht waarin hy verraai is brood geneem het, en nadat hy gedank het, het hy het gebreek en gesê, neem eet, dit is my lichaam wat vir julle gebreek word, doen dit tot my gedagtenis. Net so ook die beker na die eete met die woorde, hier die beker is die nieuwe testament in my bloed, doen dit so dikwels as julle daaruit drink, tot my gedagtenis. Want so dikwels as julle hier die brood eet, en hier die beker drink, verkondig jylle die dood van die Heere, totdat hy kom. Uh, it's just amazing to think this morning, it just stood out for me once again, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Wow. So since Jesus Christ, it's the new covenant, not a mix of old and new, it's the new covenant. It is a brand new covenant. Yes. The old priestly ordinances, the old law has passed away, we have a new high priest with new laws, with new covenant, with wow. new instructions. Ja, so dit is so mooi om te denk, hierdie beker is die nieuwe testament in my bloed, so van nou dat Heere Jesus Christus gestarf het en opgestaan het, is dit die nieuwe testament. Yes. Dis wat sy bloed kom doen het, hy die nieuwe testament kom in, in lyf, want hy moes een sterf te plaas vind van die oud testament. Joch, dit is net amazing om te denk, so ons is nie meer in die oud testament en die wette en geboeie en inzettinge van mense en verordinge van mense nie. Ons is nou in die nieuwe testament met sy um, opdrachte, met sy geboeie, so dat ons die Heere Jesus Christus kan aanneem in die wedergeboorte en kan loskom en vrykom van die sonde, Amen. van die oud testamentiese wet. Want Amen. dit was die kracht van sonde. So die Heere kom maak ons los, loof die Heere. Amen. And when Jesus Christ were on earth, that we can read from Matthew 1, from verse 1. He gave us the content of the new covenant. Yes. But while he was on earth, that content that he gave us, the instructions, the commandments, he laid down the content of the New Testament, his new yes. will, the will of God. On earth we know what is a will, what is a testament. While you are alive, that testament is actually worthless. But the moment you die, that testament becomes powerful. Okay. Then it comes to its, uh, right. its worth. Yes, its right. Yes. Then it only becomes available. Yes. Now, while Jesus was on earth, he instructed a lot of things. The moment when he died, his blood was shed. He died. Then all those words, his will, the content, came to power. Wow. And then, now, since then, we live in that New Testament as he has instructed it while he was on earth. Wow, so, van, die, van Matthäus 1 af tot waar Jesus Christus gestarf het, het hy vir ons kom sê, wat in die Nieuwe Testament gaan gebeur? Wat is die nieuwe erfenis wat ons gaan yeah. hee? So hy het aan ons kom bekend maak. En die oomlik toe hy sterf, toe hy die testament kracht. Yes. Jog, toe is dit um, tot sy recht. Yeah. En nou het dit kracht in ons leven. En nou, kan, nou weet ons, dit is wat ons gaan erf. Wanneer ons 
vir hart door die einde toe. Yes, so, dit is net mooi, want hy het vir ons hierkom sê, daar gaan verlossing vir ons wees, vir die eeuwige lewe, vir die eeuwige thuiste, en hy gaan maak vir ons plek, en as hy, as hy klaar is, gaan hy kom, en hy gaan ons kom haal. So, ons weet op hierdie stadium, jyre, dis ons erfenis, dis die nieuwe testament, so dat ons ons harte vir kan gee, en vrykom en loskom, want die nieuwe oud testament kon dit glad nie doen nie, kon niemand red verlos en vry maak nie, maar in die nieuwe testament, kan ons harte gered word. Yes, and the instructions are there. In other words, there's a lot of things that we must abide to yeah. to eventually inherit eternal life. Wow. And this is the content of the New Testament. So we must abide. We must heed to the things. that. And this is what the Word of God says. We must, as the Word are staying in us, we must also stay in the Word. How do you stay in the Word? By abiding to the instructions of the world. Amen. And if we stay at the instructions of the world, we will eventually inherit with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, gehoorzaam bly. Ons moet in die woord bly, soos die woord in ons is, met ons in hom wees. Ja, yeah, and uh, at, the, at the end of the day, our inheritance is eternal life. Amen. That is the beginning, and the end of our gospel is our eternal life, isn't it? Ja, yeah, wow. so ons erfenis en ons loon is ons eeuwige lewe. Wow. Yes, amen. So when we are using the uh, um, communion, um, in one manifestation. Remember the bread itself has no power. The grape juice itself has no power. But in, we must believe in our heart. The conviction, our daily life must be, must be to such an extent that we do and act and die and live every day. Die to self and live for Christ every day. If that is in your heart, then when you use the communion, it is an outward manifestation, a confession, uh, making your faith publicly known yeah. to the world that I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that He died for me. I believe He shed His blood for me. I believe He rose from the dead. I believe it's the blood of the new covenant. So in one manifestation, we proclaim all those things. But so. we must first believe it in our heart. Otherwise, communion means nothing. Ja, dit is wat ons vrijdag so mooi bedien het, dat dit wat jy in jou hart glo, dit wat eerst daar um, gebeur het, dan kan jy dit uiterlik sê, dan kan jy dit praat, en dit is ook die manifestatie van die nachtmal. So alles wat jy in jou hart glo, dat jy die Heere Jesus Christus kon aanneem, dat hy vir jou gesterf het, opgestaan het uit die dode, dat hy jou verlossing en vrijmaking is, dat hy jou eeuwige lewe is en al die dinge, nou kan ons dit wees dier die brood en die druive sap, wat ons nou gebruik. Dit is die herinnering vir amal daaraan, maar dit is reeds in jou hart. Dit is nie te sê, as jy nou die brood en die, en die druive sap gaan drink, dit gaan enige iets anders in jou hart veroorzaak, behalwe dit wat reeds in jou hart is nie. So ons moet dit eers geloo, dan is dit die uiterlijke manifestatie van dit, wat jy reeds in jou hart geloo. Yes, amen. So let us pray, then we're going to use the communion. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we once have again to make our faith publicly known to everybody, yeah, to present yeah. Father, what we believe in our heart, because your word tells us that what we believe in our heart, we must confess it with our mouth. We must give a public <laughs> a proof of yeah. our uh, um, faith, and then there will be salvation. With our heart, we believe unto righteousness, but with our mouth, we confess unto salvation, Father. And this is yeah. a manifestation that we can, can, can confess today what we believe in our heart. And please, Father, accept our Father manifestation. Accept what we are doing today to the glory of your kingdom in Jesus' name. And we remember that Jesus Christ died for us, rose from the dead, He shed His blood for a new covenant, and now we can live in this new covenant. Amen. Father, and I thank you that you are helping us through your word to understand what communion is all about, that we can be part of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Praise Amen. Praise you can take your bread and you can take a piece. You don't have to take a lot, just one piece as a symbol. And then you can eat it as the symbol of the body of Jesus Christ that died for us. Amen. And also, the bread, we are not partakers of his physical earthly body. Yeah. It's now the body of Christ in the spiritual because he's alive in the heavenlies. So we think of his death on the cross. He rose from the dead, but this makes us in union with his spiritual body. Wow. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, us is the Jesus Christus, Christus geestelike lichaam. Dit is nie sy aardse lichaam wat ons hier eet nie. Dit is sy lewe, dit is sy geestelike lichaam waarin ons deel het. Is dit nie amazing nie? Amen, and also the, the grape juice, it's not the physical blood, although Jesus Christ shed his physical blood of his physical body while he was on earth, but we are now partakers of the New Testament is heaven because blood symbolizes life and the life of Christ that is his blood and when we drink of it we remember he died on the cross we confess it and we believe that he came in the flesh he died in the flesh and he rose from the dead but now we drink of his heavenly life hallelujah yes, the resurrected sy, life yes ons drink van sy himmelse bloed sy himmelse lewe sy himmelse krag Dit is waar hy nou is, dit gaan nie net oor sy aardse bloed wat ons nou drink nie, want hy het sy bloed gestort vir ons op hierdie aarde, maar hy het opgevaar in die jimmel, so nou het hy een geestelike lewe waarvan ons deel kan wees. Hy mens, so you can take a sip of the grape juice. Amen. Hallelujah. So we Manifested just now, we are partakers of the New Testament, new Amen. life in Christ Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Deel van die nieuwe Testament in sy bloed. Mm, yes. So this sacrament is a says a lot. It can preach a lot in one manifestation. We preach all those things if we believe it in our heart. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. I believe everybody has taken part of the communion, and from now on. We are going to minister the word as God has laid it in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Through His Son, Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus is the mediator. Jesus is the mediator. There's no, there's not more than one mediator. There's one mediator. Yes. That is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Christus nie, daar is net een. <laughs> wow, praise Now, since last week that, uh, um, that we've been there in Lutzville, we read a roll of scriptures and once again it came to my mind, as I already last week, so in the silence when I read the scripture, it came to me and once again I was start wondering, in the book of Revelation, so we're going to do all, this, all the scriptures and some some other places in the Bible as well, that it talks about the ships on the sea and how all the ships will be, in my in just one word, will be destroyed, will vanish, it won't be there anymore, as well as the sea where that will turn to blood. Now, I always wondered, although I know what is the sim symbolism of sea, which we're not going to do right now because my wife is going to minister in Afrikaans first. But what is ships? Why does the word say ships? Now, last week, while I was preparing for a Sunday morning service and read through a scripture, I came about the scripture that really clarified to me what ships means. <laughs> wow, that is so mooi. And we're going to read the van die see in die skepe in die see wat in bloed vir die water wat in bloed verander die see wat in bloed verander en alles in die skepe wat vernietig gaan word en so aan en my man sê hy het nou so lekker deur die skrifte gelees en hy het nou daar begin wonder en gedink want baie keer as 'n mens ehm um, so 'n boodskap voorbereid dan lees jy soveel skrifte 
En iets anders tref je ook, en dan begin net ook in je werk, en werk, en werk, en wat die woord sê, gaan hierdie skepe vernietig en al die dinge. So wat is hierdie skepe, wat is die symbolieke, wat is die symboliek van die see, en al die dinge, daarin gaan ons wat sommer so lekker verstaan en volgen. Ja, yeah, and what is quite interesting, I don't know if you have ever wondered, we all, we had the question in the past, Why is there no sea in the new earth? That is now Revelation. Just read, let us read one scripture. Revelation 21 verses 1. Revelation 21 verses 1. Why is there no sea <laughs> on the new earth? Okay. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the keys to the bottomless pit. No, 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 I'm in the wrong scripture. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, was at Revelation 20. Revelation 21 verses 1. And I saw a new heaven, a new earth for the first heaven, and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. <laughs> <laughs> ja, so ons het al die vraag gekry, hoe kom ons daar nie meer een see op die nieuwe aarde? En nou ons lees het hier in openbaring 21 vers 1. En ek het een nieuwe jimmel en een nieuwe aarde gesien. Want die eerste jimmel en die eerste aarde het verby gegaan. En die see was daar nie meer nie. So ook al nie, denk jy. <laughs> ok, now first of all, when we look at waters and sea, let's first clarify that. And then we're going over to the ships. Ok. And there's a reason that it, there is no more sea, and that, that pertains to ships. Ok. But first, let us see while we are here on earth, what does sea symbolize and water symbolize that is a lot of symbolism but in a certain context what does it symbolize okay so what symboliseer the water in the sea ons gaan nou eerst daarna kyk yes okay now while we are on earth we we see here in revelation 17 let us see here in revelation 17 and also verse 1 Revelation 17 verse 1. Say, so, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Okay? Then in verse 3 it says, The woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. Now this beast is the beast of Revelation 13. Okay, so this all at women are sitting on waters and on the beast in the wilderness. And this beast is the beast of Revelation 13. Okay. Yes. Een van die sewe, okay, dit is nou openbaring 17 vers 1. Ek moet kop hou vir oogend, want hierdie is een groot boodskap. <laughs> so bid vir my dat ek recht praat. <laughs> openbaring 17 vers 1. En een van die sewe engele met die sewe skale het gekom en met my gesprek en vir my gesê, Kom hierheen, ek sal jou toon die oordeel van die groot hoer wat op die baie water sit. Dan sien ons hier so dat in vers 3 sê hy, En hy het my in die geest weggevoer na een woestijn en ek het een vrou sien sit op een skarlaak en rooi dier vol Gods lastelike name met sewe koppe en tien hoorings. Nou dis wat Stanie sê, en dit is die selfde dier wat in openbaring 13 bespreek word, so hierdie hoervrou sit op hierdie baie waters, en sy sit op hierdie dier, en dit is die selfde dier as in openbaring 13. Ja, so here we can see beast and waters are the same. Ja, so die dier en die waters is die selfde. Ja, because sometimes things are so complex, that it needs to, uh, be described in different kinds of symbolism. Yes. So we cannot, we cannot sometimes just focus on the one aspect. And this is where sometimes confusion comes in, say, especially in Revelation. So, so the beast is so complex that it needs to be described as the beast and also waters. But the waters clarifies for, to us what is the beast. Yes, so die waters en die, um, nou, die is die <laughs> En dit is, die woord gebruik soveel symbolieke, om vir ons baie dinge duidelik te maak. So nou sien ons die waters is mense, en die dier is ook eindelijk mense. 
<laughs> you are running b- before me in front of ah, me. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> now let us read verses 15 in Revelation 17. Re- re- verses 15 in Revelation 17. Because obviously where there is a sea and waters, there are ships. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to bring the connection there. Now verse 15 says, And then he said to me, The waters which you saw, which you saw, where, uh, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Wow. So the waters is actually the entire population of the world. And the harlot are sitting upon it. And when you sit upon something, you control it. Yes. If you think like somebody is riding a horse, he's controlling the horse. While he's sitting on the horse, he's controlling the horse. So this harlot woman are controlling the people of the world, which is the beast. Wow. <laughs> Weapon Bar 17, vers 15. And I say to my die waters, what you have seen, where the hoer op sit, is, is kies volke en menigtes en nasies en tale. So hier die hoervrou sit op hier die dier en sy beheer hier die dier. En hier die dier is al die volke, nasies en tale, al die menigtes. So is sy bezig om te beheer. Yes, I mean, and I just want to just wanna go jump to verse 18, just, just for a side note here. And the woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So the woman is not just a woman. It's also portrayed and symbolized as a city. This is how complex Satan's kingdom, the spiritual are. Because we, from our perspective, we need to st- understand something of the spiritual. But the spiritual is way above our way of thinking. Yeah. And that's why there's a lot of symbolism sometimes to describe one thing. So the harlot woman, which is also Babylon, is this great city Babylon, which yeah. controls all the kings and everybody on earth. Sure, so in die vrou wat jy gesien het, is die groot stad wat die heerskapai voer oor die konings van die aarde. So dit is hier die groot stad Babylon. Dit is nie net die vrou wat hy hiervan praat nie, dit is hier die mag, hier die groot stad Babylon, wat al hier die konings en dinge beheer oor hier die aarde. Yes, amen. And, and what are the, who are the people that she controls? Now, when we jump back quickly to Revelation 13, I just want to lay a quick foundation here, and then we're going to go over to ships. Otherwise, we're going to miss the point here. Now, Revelation 13, we're going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Revelation 13, verse 1 and verse 2. It's not going to be a lot, it's not going to be complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh. You understand more than what you pretend to and understand. This is how to draw. This can be seen on the part. This is how to draw. This is how to draw. This is how to draw. Yes, okay. Yes. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So, where is this beast coming from? From the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. And on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like a bear, his uh, mouth were like the mouth of a lion. The dragon, now who's the dragon? Revelation 12, are clearly, we don't even have to guess who's the dragon, is Satan the devil, old serpent himself. So this is who the dragon is, okay? And the dragon gave him his power, his authority, and his his great uh, throne and great authority. So Satan inspires people on earth to serve him, not to serve God. So the beast is all those who are under the control and inspired by the devil and controlled by the um, all at women, yes. <laughs> Babylon. So it is um, Openbaring 13, 1. 
en ek het die dier uit die see sien opkom, met 7 koppe en 10 werings, en op sy werings 10 kroene, en op sy koppe een naam van Gods lastering, so hier die dier het uit die mensdom ontstaan. Yes. Kijk, en die dier wat ek gesien het, was soos een leipaard, en sy poot is soos die van een beer, en sy bek soos die bek van een leeuw, en die draak het om sy kracht gegee, en sy troon en groot mag, en wees die draak, ons lees dit in openbaring 12, dit is Satan omself, die ou slang, die draak, die duivel, hy sê, en, um, ja, dit is tot waar ons lees, nee, so, yes. so die duivel inspireer mense om hom te dien, om hom te gehoorsam, om hom te aanbid, en hy gee die mense, wat hy inspireer om dit te doen, yes. hulle troon, en kracht, en groot mag, en saam met die hoervrou Babylon, word dit beheer, die hele yes. mensdom, word beheer, dier Satan homself. So everybody that um, submit themselves under the authority of the devil, and this is what we're going to talk about, how does it happen, etc., etc., are controlled by the harlot woman, the great city, Babylon. Sure. So, and, and this happens to all the nations over the entire world that are under the power of the devil. Sjo, so die duivel inspireer die mens en elkeen wat onder dit val word ook die, uh, beheer dier die hoervrou Babylon, want sy sit op die dier en sy beheer. So elkeen wat so Satan denk, elkeen wat Satan aan bid, elkeen wat sy, sy wil doen, is deel van hierdie dier, want dit is die denke wat hier die dier vorm in die geestelike wereld. Oké, okay, nou, who is Babylon? Who is the great city? Now we're not going to read everything but in Revelation 18 it's a detailed description who the harlot Babylon is. And in maybe in one sentence it's the um, riches, the wealth, the desires of the physical earthly world. So all the wealth in the world doesn't matter what it is called on earth. Because people immediately jump with the Illuminati and Freemason stuff. Doesn't matter what it is called on earth. The power of money, the power of material wealth is the harlot Babylon, the, the harlot woman, the great city Babylon. So wie is hierdie groot stad Babylon, hierdie hoervrou Babylon? As ons daar nou kyk, dan sien ons dit is al die reikdom en al die begeerlikhede en dinge van hier die wereld, die reikdom op hier die wereld, en nou kan jy verstaan, hoe kom hy sê, hy gee om sy troon en groot mag, want dis wat geld doen, so dit is die geld mag, hierdie hele geld stelsel, alles is hierdie groot hoervrou Babylon, wat alles beheer, yes, dier die denke van Satan. Yes, now, even Jesus Christ, were tempted, to bow down before the devil, and to be controlled by this worldly wealth. Okay, so let us read here. I just want to see which one I'm going to read, either in Matthew or in Mark. I just want to uh, um, uh, turn around. Let us read here in Matthew 4, verse 10. Let us read here Matthew 4, um, actually from verse 8, sorry, actually from verse 8. Matthew 4 from verse 8 up till verse 11. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain. Mm. <laughs> and this is going to become relevant in this message. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. So it's the physical kingdoms and the glory. Mm. Okay. So what that, that, that the devil actually showed Jesus Christ. The harlot city, the great city, Babylon. Okay. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. So, wow. if you will fall down and worship me, I will give you everything. In other words, you will also be under the control of worldly wealth, the great city, the harlot, Mammon. Okay. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall wor worship the Lord your God, and him alone you shall serve. And the devil left him. Oh. Okay. So here what Jesus was enticed, he was tempted 
but he didn't give it because he knew that this world and the lust of this world is not of God, is not from God. And that is why Jesus Christ later said that the money of this world is mammon. Mm. And you can worship mammon because he's an idol. Sure. Matthäus 4, verse 8. Weer neem die duivel om saam na een hoerberg en wees om al die koninkrijke van die wereld en hulle heerlijkheid. So op een oomlik het hy hier vir Jesus die groot stad Babylon gewees, die hoervrouw Babylon met haar mag en kracht en alles. En sê vir hom, al hier die dinge, hier die Babylon, sal ek aan u gee as u neerval en my aanbid. Yes. So, Toe sê Jesus vir hom, gaan weg Satan, want daar is geskrywe, die Heere jou God moet jou aanbid, en hom alleen dien, en die duivel het weggegaan. Hmm. Ja. So wanneer Jesus enigszins hier sou toegee, sou hy ook onder die macht van Babylon wees, onder die hoervrouw, yes. onder die God Mammon, sou hy dan um, deel gewees het. Yes. So, dit is so amazing om te denk, dat Jesus het nie geval vir hierdie versoeking nie. Alles was alles daarmee heen. Yes, and while Jesus were on earth in his ministry, they even received money from the people around him, because people con- contributed to his ministry, if I can put it like that. But he never permitted that money will control him, or preach the gospel to receive money. Ja, hy het nooit bedien nie. nie. Yes. Um, dit wat, die skrifte wat aangehaal word, om die evangelie van... Um, prosperity te bedien en om geld uit die evangelie uit te maak en swaan. Jesus het nooit ooit in sy hele tyd van prediking ooit so daar gepraat nie. Hy het altyd teen geld gepraat en gesê, dit is die God Mammon. Yes. Jy kan nie God, die God en Mammon dien nie, want Mammon is ook een God. Yes. <laughs> is die God van hierdie wereld. So hy het nooit ooit, het hy die skrifte gebruik of aangehaal om enigszins om self te verrijk met aardse rijkdom nie. Yes, and he never even, and we, we know from John's account of the gospel, that um, Judas Iscariot took some of the money, he took that money yeah. that came in the, that came in Jesus Christ, uh, that, uh, that that were contributed to him, so that he can buy food, etc, 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 to carry on here on earth. Jesus Christ knew uh, Judas took that money, but he never got bitter against Judas. Yeah. He never rebuked him. Mm. And this is sometimes the problem that we have. We never get rebuked by certain things and therefore we carry on with our life. Yeah. He never, and at one stage, they didn't have money for the temple tax. And he said to Peter, go and catch the fish. He wasn't bitter. He didn't permit money to control him. And this was the temptation of Satan towards Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ refused to be controlled by money. Ja, ja, so Judas Iscariot het nog die beers gedra, en mense het bijgedra tot Jesus bediening, as ons het nou so kan stel, en Judas Iscariot het al geld gevat, hy het gesteel, en Jesus het om nooit, ooit, um, terechtgewees nie. Yes. Hy het nooit bitter geraak daar oor nie, hy het nooit eers daar oor gepraat nie, hy het eers gesê nie, hy het eers geuiter nie, want het was nie van belangrik nie. Yes. En um, dit is baie keer ook, dit is wat Stanie ook sê, baie keer word ons nie recht gehelp op iets wat ons verkeerd doen nie, en daarom hou ons net aan om dit te doen, maar jou eie hart moet met jou praat, jou eie hart moet jou vermaan, en jy moet besef wat jou saak is in die evangelie, en dit was vir my so erg gewees om te denk dat hulle het Jesus tempel belasting gevra, en hy was die Seen van God, en het was Godse tempel supposed to be, <laughs> yes. en hy was die Seen van God, en om in die tempel te kon ingaan, moes die Seen van God belasting betaal, maar is sy vaderse tempel gewees. <laughs> so, dit was eigenlijk erg om aan te denk, en Jesus het om nie eerst tegesit nie, hy het nie eerst daarover gepraat nie, hy het vir Peter gesê, gaan vang die vis, dat ons hulle kan betaal en ingaan. So, Jesus het nooit ooit in sy hele leven geld hooggeacht nie. Sure. and we never realize it in that aspect and when also when you go and read in Luke 16 as well as in Acts where Ananias and Sapphira lied about finances they d- physically died in the church and that was a big uproar in that to such an extent that people feared to become part of the true gospel and um, uh, even Jesus Christ he never heeded 
in, 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 in Luke 16, he never, he, he, he said to us that, um, that money is somebody else's goods. Yeah, in uh, uh, Luke 16 from verse 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you can go and read there, that mammon is the god of this world. Now in Revelation, it is revealed as the uh, harlot Babylon women, the great city. And so it's one and the same thing, mammon and the harlot women. And Jesus Christ never submit to do that. Ja, en um, dit is wat Sanino sê in Lukas 16, dan is gelees van An- 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 Ananias en Safira wat gelieg het oor geld. Maar dit is om wat hulle gelieg het vir die heilige gees. Yes. Hulle was so gierig in hulle harte dat hulle gelieg het vir die heilige gees. En ek denk as ons net vandag dit kan begryp, al klaar, dan skrik jy jou uit aan een bloedgroep uit. Want ek mens besef, hoe baie keer jok jy oor jou finansies, ek het nie, ek kan nie gee nie, ek kan nie doen nie, ek kan nie help nie, ek kan nie uitsorteer nie, en terwijl die mens weet, maar jy is eindelijk in staat om dit te doen, maar jy lieg vir God, jy lieg vir die mens, en um, Ananias en Safira het dood neergeslaan, omdat hulle vir God sy gees gelieg het, en um, daar was een groot vrees wat gekom het onder amal, en dit was van so um, een mate gewees, dat hulle te bang was om aan te sluit, by die apostel, so dat hulle um, nie ook dalk dood neerslaan as hulle leeg nie, want allemaal het geweer die verdraaidheid van die mense hart, is dit die so nie die mense hart is verdraaid, hy is gierig, hy wil vir homself hy wil vir homself toe eien, hy wil eindelijk jok oor sy inkomste en goed er so dat hy meer vir homself kan heen, want elke voel, dis my blessing, dis myne, nou um, hy praat ook die vader in Lukas, praat hy um, van, uh, Lukas 16, praat hy van die um, God Mammon En die, die god Mammon is diezelfde als die hoervrouw Babylon, die groot stad, wat bespreek word in openbaring. So, as we mens dit kan verstaan, dan maak daar al een groter prentjie vir een mens oop. Yes, and when we read in 1 John, I just want to read this verse as well, then we're going to go to two portions in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel and Isaiah, that already we can see this trademarks of the devil in two kingdoms, and in two kings, and how Satan's entire um, character has been formed in these kingdoms, and how God has revealed the devil in their kingdom. Oh. Sure. So let us read 1 John 2 from verse 15 up till verse, um, I think, 17. Yeah. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world are passing away, and the lust of it, but he who uh, does the will of God abides forever. So, Jesus Christ refused to bow down before the lust of this world. Mm. And this is what we need to understand. If we have a love for the things of this world, there is a difference in using the things that you have, your salary, your income, etc., and really love it, desire it, and work most of your life, and your mind and your heart are busy merely and primarily centering around the, uh, and, and use your income only to uh, fulfill the lust of this world. In Johannes 2, verse 15, when in the world lief he, of the things that in the world is me, as iemand die wereld lief het, dan is die liefde van die vader nie in hom sure. nie. So die liefde van die vader was so in Jesus, dat hy nie kon val <laughs> vir die dinge van hierdie wereld nie. Want sure. alles wat in die wereld is, die begeerlikheid van die vlees en die begeerlikheid van die oe en die grootheid van die lewe, is nie uit die vader nie, maar is uit die wereld. En hoeveel keer wil ons dit afdruk en afforseer op die evangelie? Yes. En hy sê, um, en die wereld gaan voorbij en sy begeerlikheid, maar hy wat die wil van God doen, bly verewig. So as ons bezig is om te denk dat um, al hierdie um, reikdomme en dinge op hierdie aarde is die grootsheid 
van die wereld, en ons bekijkt dit, en ons begeer dit, en ons raak gierig daarna, sit ons met een machtige probleem, want dan het jy die dinge van die wereld lief, en dit is nie uit Godse koninkrijk uit nie, ja. want God het nie geld ingebring nie, God het nie besluit, jy gaan geld wees op die aarde nie, en dit is wat, wat ons kan verstaan, en volgend ek so wakker word, dan denk ek, jyre, hoe weet een mens, daar is een probleem in jou hart, oor hier die wereldse dinge, en daar kan het vir jou ook een antwoord gee, en onmiddellijk kom het by my, dat wanneer jou gemoed af is, wanneer jy nie geld het nie, kan ek vir jou sê, sê vastgevang, dan beheer hier die hoervou Babylon, want jy reageer volgens dit, jy lewe volgens dit, jy treef volgens dit op, en as jy, jou bankrekening nou sharp like, en jy voel nie, jy sê, kan nou hierdie maand deerkom, en wat wat, dan is jy so maar happy, en vrolik, en opgewonde, jy sê maar alle mens, maar as daar drukking is van finansies, dan is het af, en het lyk of die dood op jou is, en jou hele gemoed is die mekaar, en al die dinge, dan moet jy weer, daar is een beheer, daar is een kracht, daar is een macht, wat bezig is om jou te beheer, want wat sê die woord? Die woord van die Heere moet jou gemoed vernieuwe. Jy moet vernieuwe word na die innerlijke en die gemoed. So dit is die woord van God, die, die, die jimmelse, wat die gemoed van jou moet verander, nie asof jy geld het of nie. <laughs> ja, maar het is maar een translator, ja, so, sorry, I'm saying to what you were saying, it is maar een translator wat my wife has said, this morning she just woke up and said, Lord, how do we know if we are under the control of this harlot Babylon or under control of Mammon? Now Luke 16 said to us that Mammon is the god of money, of earthly wealth and possessions. And there he rebuked actually the Pharisees because of their um, uh, uh, geldgierigheid. What is it? Mm. <laughs> love of money. Love. love of money. Now, when we look in Revelations 18 and I just want to read one verse to you so that we can see that we as children of God also get caught under this and my wife is saying the moment when money starts ruling your emotional and spiritual wealth and uh, joy etc then you know there is a control in your life okay he says in Revelations 18 verses 4 and I heard another voice from heaven saying saying Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Sure. So God is calling. He knows that the children of God will be caught under the rule of the harlot woman Babylon. Because she is sitting in this world and rules. She rules the people that are under the sway of the devil. And this is what the Bible says. Children of God, Galatians 3 are talking about it. How they're falling away from the spirit into the flesh once again. The moment when we fall away, when we fall away from the sound and true doctrine, we become, uh, we are under the rule of this harlot woman Babylon. And this is what we see in the Christian church in general. The main preaching is about how great is money and how abundant and God wants you to have it and it's a creation from God as if. No. God says come under from the out of under that way of thinking and mindset. Hallelujah. Um, 18 verse 4. Yeah. Ja, ja, ja. Vers 4. En ek het een ander stem uit die jimmel oor sê, gaan uit daar uit, my volk, so dat jylle nie gemeenskap met haar sondes mag hee, so. en van haar pla ontvang nie. So kom onder die mag uit, kom onder die beheer uit, so dat sy jou nie verder kan beheer, en jy deel van haar sondes en haar pla mag wees nie, want wat is hierdie pla? Ja. Sy gaan geoordeel word, en as jy by haar bly, as jy beheer word dier haar, gaan jy die selfde oordeel ondergaan, en wat is dit? Ja. Dit is die eeuwige verderf, Dit is die eeuwige oordeel en dit is waar ons onder moet uitkom. Ons moet besef dat elke woord wat jy van God hoor, dis wat jy moet eet, dis wat jy moet drink, dis wat jy moet inneem, dis wat jy moet volmaak en versadig en rijk en, um, en al die dinge gee op die aarde, so dat jy die eeuwigheid kan ingaan. So, now when we see uh, to, to share in a sense, so Money entices us, and this we can read in 1 Timothy, Timothy 6, 
Money entices us to do sin. Money entices us to fall in the trap. Fall in the trap of sin. So money deceives us to do sin. And because we have the money, we think it's okay with God. Yeah. And it's not okay with God. And this is what he says, we must not share in her sin. So we must come out under a certain, out of a certain mindset in our hearts. Isn't it sure. so? Yeah, so, so this is the main thing. Uitkom, so that we don't so that they don't think, so that they don't think us um, gedagtes and emotions and heart beheer nie. En ek denk dit kan ook volgend wie sin maak, want dit het vir my so sin gemaakt, om te denk, jyre, hoe reageer ek wanneer daar nie geld is nie? En hoe reageer ek wanneer daar geld is? As jy daar kan sien, al klaar, dan weet jy, jyre, ek kan nie deel van haar sonde en ongerechtigheid wees nie, ek kan nie deel van haar emoties wees nie, want dis daar emotionele opsyking, wat die mens baie keer ondergaan, ja, jy het en die jyre wil hee, jy moet hee, en al die dinge, dis het recycling wat al geplaas vind, en dit verlei mens om die sonde van die wereld te doen, maar wanneer die mens kan vrede en, um, wat hy so mooi sê, vergenoegd wees, yes. in die jyre, dan loop jy die strijd in narrow. <laughs> dan besef jy, jyre, ek kan nie dier haar verder beheer word nie. Ja, yeah, and what is actually, actually scary in verse 13, let us just read in verse 13, um, that he says here, um, and cinnamon and incense and fragrance, oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. This is what um, uh, is under her control. He says from verse 11, And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchants anymore. So even the souls of men, and we as children of God as well, can fall into her trap. Mm. And so our soul are under her control. Then we are part of this beast that are controlled by money. Sure. Sure. Moet ek dit oor dra? Waar het jy gelees van ook? Net vers 13, net vir die laaste stikkie, net om te wees hoe siele in haar vastgevang het. En kaneel en reekwerk, en salf en weerwerk, en wijn en olijfolie, en fijn meel en koring, en groot vee en skape, en van paarde en waans, en slape, ach, slave en mense, siele, mense siele, kan vastgevang word in haar, so dit is, dit is waar ons moet uitkom, ons siel moet nie vastgevang, in haar sonde, haar pla, ongerechtigheid nie, en dit is wat Elmer nou so mooi sê, ek is kies, ek het dit nou gelees, dat ek jou nou gemis is, sy sê, as ons skuld maak, plaas van ons self, onder die hoerse beheer, dan moet ons geld hee om dit te betaal, dit maak ons desperaat, en dit is wat gebeur, mys raak naderend in die turmoil, want jy raak so desperaat, jy wil net nie sonder geld sit nie, want dit maak of jy gelukkig is, of ongelukkig is, so mys maak baie keer ongelooflike skuld en foute en dinge, net om nie, nie te heen nie, want sodra die lening of iets in jou bankrekening betaal, word dan voel jy weer happy, en dit is wat ons beheer, dit is hoe ons die heel tyd voel, en ervaar en beleef, en as daar nie is nie, en as ons af, en ons voel down, en ons voel ongelukkig, en ons voel die Heere is nie meer met ons nie, en hy het ons verlaat, en ons weet nie meer waar ons geloof nie, en al die type van dinge, so dit is een beheer, wat sy uitoefen die hele tyd, oor jou siel, oor jou innerlijke. Ja, now when we read verse 23 and 24, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. So we've got thundering weather here. Yeah, it's rain. And it's thunder. It's extremely strange. Yes. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, and the voice of oh. bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. So all the great men on the earth, and we look up to the great men, is under the control of this woman, all, all at women. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all who were slain on earth. So even the children of God can also uh, um, be destroyed by her as well. Sure. 
um, openbaring 1823, en die licht van een lam zal nooit meer in jou sky nie, en die stem van die bruide gaan en bruid zal nooit meer in jou gehoor word nie, want jou handelaars was die grootes van die aarde, wanneer jou toverij is al die nazies verlei, en die bloed van die profete en die heilige is in haar gevind, en amal wat op die aarde gedood is, nou kan ons eindelijk sien, hoe vreed is geld, ja. dit laat bloed vloei, Vloe, dit yes. maak mense dood, dit dit maak dat mense onder haar val. En dit is nogal verschrikkelijk om aan te denken dat geld veroorzaak eindelijk alles, rijkdom, eer, mag, al die dinge veroorzaak, dat zelfs die heilige, zelfs die wat die Heere werkelijk dien, kan val en strijkel onder die dinge, dat hulle bloed kan vloei onder die dinge. Ja, vir die wat nie toegeen nie. Ja, vir die wat nie toegeen nie, dit is ons praat nou daarvan, vir die wat nie toegeen nie, die wat sê, Jere, ek gaan deerdruk, ek gaan deerdruk, ek gaan nie beheer word nie, ek gaan nie toegeen aan die hoervrou Babylon en haar mag en kracht en beheer nie. En baie keer ervaar ons dit as kinders van die Jere, yes. dit voel letterlijk, of jou siel baie keer gepeinig en doodgemaak word, omdat jy nie deel raak van die mag nie. Yeah, because when we think of Jesus Christ, when he refused to um, give heed to um, Satan's offer, and he, sa- he said in the one instance, I give wealth and riches to whom I want to give it to. Yes. So if you bow down to me, I'll give it to you as well. Okay. And we as children of God, if we don't want to bow down, you also bear the consequences, and the Bible says, of her wrath. So she's got also a wrath. And if you are not willing to bow down before it, you also receive that wrath. You, it also feels like your blood are oh. that you are flowing out of your are, are, are out of your soul. <laughs> ja, so as ons as kinders van die Heere nie wil toegee aan hierdie mag van haar nie, voel dit baie keer vir ons asof ons bloed vloei, asof ons doodgemaak word, want onthou net, um, die duivel het gesê, hy sal geef wie hy wil, die wat onder sy mag buig, sy, sy, sy um, heerskapie aanneem, as ek het so kan stel, en wanneer ons as kinders van die Heere vaststaan, en sê, ek sal nie deel raak van dit nie, dan um, gaan hy nie veel geen nie, <laughs> dit is net hoe makkelijk het is, en dit is baie keer wanneer het voel, Heere, ek kan nie meer nie, want jy gaan die gevolg van jou besluit dra, en dis wat Jesus Christus vir ons so mooi kom wees het, hy het vir ons kom wees, staan de thee, dien nie die Heere, God die Almachtige van jimmel en aarde, moet nie onder Satan gaan buig, onder sy, um, sy beheer en onder sy verlok en verleiding nie, gaan dier, loop die pad van leiding, loop die pad en bly, elke dag jou kruis op en sê, Heere ek gaan, al is dit hoe moeilik, maar het voel baie keer, asof jy sterf baie keer binne, omdat jy moet dier uit die korte gaan, omdat jy baie keer so dier drukking moet gaan, dat jy nou dan baie keer nie weet wat er kan toe nie. Dit is echt die skere te denk of het, after Jesus were obedient to the word of God, his entire last 33 and a half years, he lived in poverty. Yeah. He didn't have a home, he didn't have anything tangible. And we never think of Jesus as a poor person, why not? Because he lived the life that God wanted him to live and reach out to people and minister the gospel and heal the sick, etc., etc. So at the end of the day, he died for us. And he died as a poor person only with the clothes that were on his body. And that was also torn away from him right at the end. So um, when we serve the Lord, there's no guarantee for material wealth. (laughs) If we bow down to it and we give heed to it, yes. Otherwise... God will just sustain you and carry you through in this life. And this is what Jesus Christ is. God knows what we need to live here and carry forth the gospel. It's not to enrich our earthly material life. So, ja, dit gaan altyd oor om die evangelie uit te dra. Dat God voorsien dit wat jy nodig het om die evangelie uit te dra. En baie keer voel het vir ons dat die Heere moet my sien, so dat ek een heerlijke, um, gemaksuchtige lewe op hier die aarde kan lewe, en God gaan dit nooit doen nie, hy gaan jou nie onder die mag plaas van Babylon nie, as jy om werkelijk dien, 
Ga is dit iets wat jy moet verstaan, jyre, dit moet oor die koninkrijk gaan. Soek my koninkrijk, soek siele, soek my werk, my welgevallen. besef dat het oor siele gaan, besef dat het oor my koninkrijk gaan. Daar sal ek vir jou sorg, ek sal het uitsorteer, dit wat jy nodig het. Nou, ja. dis baie keer waar ons onvergenoegd raak. Want mys wil baie keer nie net hee wat jy nodig het nie. Jy is een bykie extra. En as mys nie nou extra kry nie, dan raak jy onvergenoegd, jy raak kwaad, jy raak ongelukkig met die heren. Hoekom het hierdie ouwe nie en? Maar jy het nie gaan buig nie. En baie keer druk dit ons om te gaan buig onder die hoervrou Babylon. Sjo. Sure. Now, when we read further in Revelation 18, and this is the connection we, uh, we, we want to make now, um, that he says, and this is uh, Revelation 18 tells us who is the uh, 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 Babylon. She, uh, the, the, the people of this earth in verse 15 said, the merchants of these things who became rich by her. So everybody on earth became rich out of Babylon. Okay. Then it says in verse so, 17. Like yeah. Yeah. So, Verse 17, for in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance. So, and they cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what is like this city? So here we see the connection. Here we see something, the merchants of this earth. They traveled by ships to distribute and accumulate wealth and riches on earth. And the Lord says, when I'm going to judge this woman, this will come to an end as well. All the ships, all the merchants, all the rich people of the world. So, Romeine 8, 8, Openbaring 18 vers 17. In elke steerman, in die hele menigte op die skepe, menigte, op die skepe, en die matroose, en amal wat die see bevaar, het weg, um, ver weg gaan staan, en het uitgeroep, toe hulle die rook van haar verbranding sien en gesê, wat er groot stad, uh, wat er stad is so, soos die groot stad, so toe dit op een einde kom, toe is amal eindelijk in een toestand, yes. eindelijk is amal verbaas, dat hier die groot mag op een einde gekom het, yes. so, Alle skepe, alles gaan op een einde kom. Ja, en dit is nou die skepe wat so op die see en op die water vaar, wat ons nou so lekker gaan oor praat vandag. Yes, so we see here, uh, earlier here uh, in verse 9 as well, that when she gets burned, he says when they see the smoke of her burning, so there will be a burning of this woman, this harlot woman. Now, when we go back to Isaiah and Ezekiel, we see two kingdoms. The one is the king of Tyre and the other of Babylon. Now, because um, we see in Revelation that this worldly wealth is Babylon, we also see that we also know there was a physical Babylonian kingdom. Okay? We know about this. We read it in the Old Testament. Even there were a vision of a dream of Nebuchadnezzar which Daniel interpreted of this king of Babylon, which is the was the golden kingdom. Mm. Okay? So there was a physical kingdom, and God, there also came a time when God spoke against the physical kingdom that symbolized and spoke to us something spiritual. So, as you said, you in the Old Testament, from the state of Theatire and from Babylon. So, Babylon had physically bestaan. Dit was hierdie gouwe stad gewees en um, so dit was, dit was rechtig daar. In die oud testament kan jy daarvan gaan lees. Dit was een fysische stad gewees. En um, God het op een stadium tot uh, gepraat en um, teen hierdie stad gekom wat fysisch bestaan het in die oud testament. Ja, yeah, and we will see a lot of those trademarks that God described in the New, uh, the New Testament in Revelation that's also here. So here we can see Satan, when he inspired something physical, so it, uh, when it becomes a physical rich, material rich thing, it is not of God, but it is of the devil himself. Yes. Even even the Old Testament. So as can, as can die selfde kenmerke lees in die stad Babylon, in die groot stad Babylon, wat 
die hoervrou waarvan gepraat word in openbaring. Want alles wat Satan inspireer in die selfde kenmerk. Yes. <laughs> Jy gaan sy kenmerk kry in, die, in sy selfde inspiratie van iets. So, dit was die selfde kenmerke in die um, grootstad Babylon en nou ook weer in openbaring in die hoervrou Babylon. Ja, yeah, so by this we can see the devil were there all the time. Yes, <laughs> was He wasn't away and then he came back, he was there all the time. Okay, but first of all, we, before we read that, let's just, just read the Isaiah 33 and verse uh, 21. And this is what made me to understand what ships are. Because we see here in Revelation that the Bible says here, the ships that were sailing on the sea, they will also be destroyed. What is the ships? What is the symbolism of ships? Uh, Isaiah 33 verses 21. But there the majestic Lord will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams, in which no galley, that is, that galley is rowboats, with oars will sail. No majestic ship will pass by. Now this majestic ship is the boastful ship. Some, uh, the ships that are full of pride, that are proud. So ships are, symbol, are a symbol of to be boastful, to be proud. And this is what the Lord says. There will come a time when these ships won't sail anymore. So when we look at the symbolism of ship, it's a pride, boastful person, arrogant nature. So, you say 33 vers 21. Maar daar sal die Heere vir ons heerlik wees. Dit sal een plek van riviere wees, van breestroome, geen vloot van rooi skepe sal daarop vaar nie, en geen trotse skip sal daar oor gaan nie. So, wat beteken hier die skepe? Uh, wat is die symbo- symboliek van hierdie skepe? Dit is een trotse, hoogmoedige mens, sy geaardheid, sy gesintheid. Nou, dier wie word het geinspireer? Dier Satan homself. Want ons sien die selfde kenmerke in die hoorvrou Babylon. Ons sien die selfde kenmerke in Babylon in die oud testament. So, dit is hoe jou hart is, die um, trotse, hoogmoedige hart, wat het meer en meer en meer soek en meer begeerlik en meer reikdom en eer en mag en al hierdie dinge, so dit is wat hierdie skepe symboliseer. Ja, yeah, so this ships, and there's obviously in this world we know about it, the riches of the riches, they, they rule the world. So they travel on the sea, so they use the people to accumulate wealth. And they present their wealth to such an extent that it makes the majority of the people to desire their wealth, but the majority of the people will never get there. That is what a devil don't tell the people. The absolute majority in this world, whether you are a sinner or a child of God, you will never get that wealth that are presented in TVs and adverts and whatever the case might be. You will never get it. Because it's only it only pertains to a few people in this world. And they are the ships moving to and fro and accumulating the wealth and the sea is the people and these ships are carry are uh, uh, running through the people so that they can accumulate this wealth. Are sailing so, through the people. So and it is I like Mama to think when he says must say the main sir. Yes. And here is skipper, here is trotsa harte, as he tis any main sir, and I'll for two hulle reikdom, hulle vertoon, hulle mag, en groot kracht, en al die yes. dinge, en die mens, wat maar die deel is van die see, van mense, begeer dit wat hulle sien, hulle begeer die reikdom, hulle begeer die mag en eer, en bittermin, kry dit, so jou gedagtes, hart, emoties, alles, word daar vastgevang, word beheer, dier die hoervrou Babylon, omdat jy dit begeer, wat jy sien, die trots sy, die hoogmoed, die skepe, wat so tussen allemaal dier gaan, en, en handel drijf en tekeer gaan, en dit kom by die minderheid, van die mensheid, maar Satan hou die mens vast, hy hou die mens gevangen, in die begeerlikheid en gierigheid. Tja, because I'm just thinking now of something, um, the people of the world are giving way. It permits the ships to sail. Yeah. It gives power to ships. It keeps the ships uh, afloat. Yeah. <laughs> and we are enticed and we desire the, sh- the wealth of that comes from the ships. And we will never get it. Ons is verwonder. Yes. We can teen hierdie dier oorlog voor. Who can war against this beast and overcome it? 
we won't, able, we won't be able to. We must, the only way to overcome is through Jesus Christ. Give your life to Christ and let your mind and your heart be renewed by the truth of God's word and come out under the power of mammon, this harlot woman. Ja, ons moet onder die verwondering uitkom, want baie ja. keer verwonder ons ons so, dat ons so vastgevang raak, en hierdie goed, en die eerste manier, is om die Heere Jesus Christus aan te neem, en die wedergeboorte, jou hart, um, los te kry, onder het uit te kom, en te kan besef, Heere, my gemoed, my leven moet vernieuwe word, dier die woord, dier die kracht, dier die verlossing, dis hoe ek onder die hoervrouw, en haar mag, en haar kracht, en haar verwondering, en reikdom, en eer, en begeerlik hier en alles kan uitkom en ek moet wakker wees en ek moet nuchter wees en ek moet waakzaam wees want Jesus Christus was wakker hy was nuchter, hy was waakzaam hy het die vader gesoek hy het verhouding met hom gehad en hy het besef dit gaan nie hier oor nie, want sou ek die satan aan bid, aan bid ek nie meer God die vader wat my gestuur het nie, so hy was wakker, hy was waakzaam, hy was nuchter, en dis wat die Heere ons wil leer in ons leven, word wakker, word nuchter, word waakzaam, wees by, sien nie ding vir wat hy is, sien nie die verwondering vir wat het is, moet nie daarmee saam gaan, en so uh, sluier oor jou kry, en so besluier word, soos wat Satan vir Eva verlei het aan die begin met begeerlikheid, en dis wat ons baie keer onderval, ons val onder die begeerlikheid, want ons word so mee gesleep dier Amen. die dinge, en ons is nie meer nuchter nie, ons is sluier oor ons. So, now let us read here in Isaiah 14, let's go there, let's go there, Isaiah 14, now this was a prophetic word against the physical Babylon, but we will see all the traits of Satan, and what we read in Revelation, because Revelation is talking also about the wrath of this harlot woman Babylon that forces herself and persecutes the saints and everyone in the world. And let us see in the Old Testament if it were already so. Now, um, Isaiah 14, I'm going to read from verses 3. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve, that you will take up the proverb against the, Bab the king of Babylon and say, How the oppressor has ceased, the golden city ceased. Now in Afrikaans sure. it doesn't say golden city, but the original word says golden city. The Lord has broken the staff, that is its power, of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. Now he's talking, what, who is this ruler and what? why is, has the Lord broken their power? He who struck the people with rough, with continual strokes, and this is what Babylon did, this golden city, he struck the people in wrath with continual strokes. He who ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and no one hinders. So who causes the persecution? Who causes tribulation? Jesus Christ says the tribulation that will come unto the whole world. The sinner as well as the child of God, that persecution, that tribulation will be there and it is caused by the love of money and material wealth. So, you saw 14 verse 3, and op die dag is die Heere jou ris gee van jou smart en jou onris van die harde dienstbaarheid waarmee hulle jou laat dien het, dan sal jy hierdie spotlet aanhef oor die koning van Babel en sê, hoe het die driver nou opgehou, opgehou die verdrukking? Die Heere het die stok van die godeloose verbreek, die staf van die heersers, waar die, waar die volk verwoes het in grimmigheid, met slaan sonder ophou, wat in toren oor die nazies geheers het, met de achtervolging sonder verskoning. So, wat bring hier die verdrukking? Hy praat hier van die koning van Babel, die driver, wat um, nie opgehou het nie, en God het naderhand hierdie mag van hom verbreek. Nou, wat bring hierdie verdrukking oor die hele wereld? Nie net oor die kind van die Heere nie, oor die hele wereld. Yes. Geld bring hierdie verdrukking. And this is what Jesus Christ says, the great tribulation that will come on over the whole world. And it is, has already come. Jesus Christ were there, he were in the temptation to be to be to fall under the um verdrukking um, um, <laughs> tribulation <laughs> <laughs> to be persecuted by money yeah. Jesus Christ was tempted there and he showed us not to fall under that um power of worldly wealth 
Otherwise, we will fall under tribulation. Ja, ja, so ons onder dit insak gaan ons onder verdrukking val. Yes. En dit is wat ons moet besef, dat dit is een verdrukking. Geld bring verdrukking. Yes. Dit is wat het bring. Maar ons moet onder het uitkom. Ons moet die Heere dien. Yes. Ons moet besef, dit gaan we die Koninkrijk van God. En dit Amen. is wat Jesus daar vir ons gewaas het. De, hy, was, hy was versoek gewees om onder die verdrukking van geld te val. Yes, en hy het nie gedoen nie. Want hy daar vir ons gewaas, dit gaan we die Koninkrijk van sy vader, God alleen moet jy dien, that's it, <laughs> en as ons dit kan vastmaak in ons harte vandag, en verstaan hier of ons het en of ons nie het nie, of ons dier wat sy drukking gaan, en die drukking gaan nou bly, ons moet jy bly dien, Amen. en ons gemoed moet vernieuwe word, het moet nie afgerem en bly gemaakt word dier geld nie, want as jy deel van die verdrukking, tjo, tjo, Now let us read from verse 12 here in uh, Isaiah 14. And you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How are you cut down to the ground? And we must, must remember, this is the context of the physical Babylon that has fallen. But there was a spiritual power and authority that ruled Babylon, this golden city. And we even read the exact same thing in Revelation. So it has never changed. Even in the time of Jesus. That's why he drove out the money changers and those who were the merchants in the temple because Satan also brought merchandise and money into the temple and Jesus just drove them out. Yeah. This verse 12. Isaiah 14 verse 12. Hoe het jy uit die hemel geval, oor morgenster, sien van die dagraad? Hoe le het jy in die aarde neergestaan, geslaan, oorweldiger van die nazies? So wat doen Satan? Hy oorweldig. Hmm. Hy wil jou onder sy mag hee. Hy wil hee, jy moet om dien. Hy wil hee, jy moet die Heere verloon en achter hom aangaan. En wat het gebeur? Die mens het die handel drijf in die tempel ingebring. Hy het deel geraak. Hy het Satanse... Um, Sy, sy, sy geaardheid aanvaar en oorheersing, en oorheersing aanvaar en dit in die tempel ingebring en wat het Jesus kom doen? Hy het daar uitgedrijf en gesê, my vaderse huis moet een huis van gebed wees hy sê vandag vir jou, drijf dit uit jou tempel uit jou tempel, jou innerlijke moet een huis van gebed wees een huis wat verstaan ek moet die Heere dien, ek moet hom alleen dien, ek kan nie onder Satan sy beheer inval nie. Ja, en it's actually scary to think of this Satan, Lucifer, he says the last, uh, uh, last sentence in verse 12, you who weakened the nations, you weaken the nations, we think we become strong, but we actually get weakened. So, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And this we can read even in 2 Thessalonians 2, <laughs> where Satan will exalt himself and sit in the temple of God and give uh, and, and pretend to be God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Yeah. Satan wants to come in the mount of congregation. He wants to come into the children of God. And where are we? We are, on, we are in the... Um, Spiritual. Spirit, the spiritual mountain, the new Jerusalem, and he wants to come into that mount of congregation. When we when we read about Job, they were busy serving the Lord, and Satan came there because he wants to be there as well. Where you worship, Satan wants to be there in that congregation. Wow. And either we can permit him or we can drive him out. Sure. It is up to us. God won't do it on our behalf. It's to whom we are willingly submitting our hearts to. Ja, vers 13, en jy het in jou hart gesê, Ek wil opklim in die himmel, my troon verhef boor die sterre van God. Satan wil hom altyd verhef boor God. Hy trotse, skip, 
skip, hoogmoedige hart, en dit is diezelfde eigenschap wat die mens het, wat Satan dien. Yes. Hy sê, um, van God, en sit op die berg van samenkomst, en dit het my verschrikkelijk getref gister, ons is in hierdie vergadering, ons dien die Heere, ons is hier by mekaar, ons maak die berg van, yes, op die berg, en hy wil daar inkom, hy wil deel wees, hy wil jou hart kom verlei, terwyl jy bezig is met die Heere, en baie keer voel ons, die duivel kan nou nie, en die duivel kan nie dit nie, en dat nie, en hy weet nie, en hy ken nie my gedagtes nie, en hy ken nie my, hy ken alles, hy wil daar in, hy wil deel, en hy wil ons hart kom verlei, en dit is ons kese, terwijl ons bezig is om die Heere te dien, of hy ons hart gaan verlei of nie, hy het in die tuin ingekom, hy het even sy hart kom verlei in die tuin, so ons moet nuchter raak, ons moet wakker raak om te besef, dat die duivel is in die geestelike wereld, en daar is hy bezig om siele te verlei en te verlok, elke liewe dag, met hier die aardse reikdomme en weelde en dinge wat jou hart trots maak, wat die selfde geaardheid en karakter trekke van die satan aan jou. Ja, yeah, cause he entices us by the pride of life, and when we fall with pride, we are the ship, we are busy sailing. And then, we, then, then he entices us to accumulate wealth. And this makes us fall away from the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we see his trademark already here. And now Babylon were the very first kingdom revealed in Daniel. That were the very first, if I can put it in brackets, end time kingdom. from, Because God has revealed from Babylon up till the end, this beast that will rule the world inspired by Satan and kingdoms. Now Babylon, the golden city, was the very first one. And this, we can see Satan's character in the physical Babylon and now also in the spiritual Babylon. Ja, so ons sien om satanse kenmerke in die vreeslike Babylon en nou sien ons dit ook in die geestelike Babylon. Yes. Precies, daar is selfde kenmerke. Yes, want hy was die eerste eindtijd koninkryk op aarde gewees wat God dier Daniel geopenbaar het. Right. Now let us read further. Verse 15, 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Didn't he tempt even yeah. say, you will be like God? <laughs> wow. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol. Where is Satan's abode? Is in Sheol is in hell. To the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? who made the world as a wilderness, this, this woman, all at Babylon, in Revelation 17 says, this beast is in the wilderness, it's in the desert, and destroys its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. So this entire world, which is under the control of the devil, is the wilderness, it is the desert. Okay, and this is where the beast is, and this is where the harlot Babylon woman rules, is in this world. And he says, Is this the man? Is this the man? Now, can a man in this context be Satan? And we're gonna clarify it right now. <laughs> Jesaja 14 14. Ek wil boor die hoogt, um, ek wil klim boor die hoogtes van die wolke, my gelijkstel met die allerhoogste, dit is Satan sy, sy geaardheid, hy wil hem altyd boog God stel, hy wil altyd aan bid word, <laughs> en dit is wat hy ook gedoen het met Eva, hy het gesê, sal jy nie soos God wees nie, so hy het al gaan versoek met die selfde geaardheid as wat in hom is, wou hy ook in haai, en hy sê, ja, in die doodruk sal jy neergewerp word, in die diepste plekke van die keil, Die wat jou sien, beskou jou. Hulle let op jou en sê, Is dit die man, wat die aarde laat sidder het, koninkryke laat bes- wat beef het, die wereld soos een woestijn gemaakt het, en sy stede verwoes het, wat sy gevangenis nie losgelaat het huis toe nie. So. Nou ons lees daar met, met die oorvrou Babylon, dat sy is in die woestijn, sy sit op die dier in die woestijn, en die aarde is soos die woestijn, nou al die mense is hier, en die dier beheer, en die dier is gevorm uit die mense uit, van die selfde gedachte en idee, en trotsheid van Satan, wat jy anneem, word jy deel van die dier, en die oorvrou Babylon sit in sy beheer. So, so if we are prideful and boastful, we are in the ships, we are under the sway and the control of this harlot Babylon. 
Mm. And when we have the thinking pattern that the gospel is gain and that we can trade with the gospel, he says in 2 Corinthians um, 2 verses 17, we are not, we don't uh, commercialize the word of God. Paul says we don't commercialize the word of God. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17. Well, um, we don't walk. We are not walkers with the word. We un- don't adulterate the word. And this is what the Bible says in with the uh, with the harlot women. If you give heed to her desires, you ad- you are part of her adultery, because she makes us to adulterate the word of God. We commit fornication with her against God. Hallelujah. And even. The, uh, the, the children of God can be caught under this. And this is the call that God has come out of, out under her. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17 Want ons is nie soos baie, baie menigte, wat handel drijft met die woord van God nie, maar as oprechtheid, maar as uit God, in die teenwoordigheid van God, spreek ons in Christus. So as jou hart op reg is, jy is by die Heere is, en sy teenwoordigheid, jou hart verstaan, om jou nie te verhef boog God nie, om jou van die skeep, die trotse skeep te word, wat handel dreig met die woord, oor op die see nie, dan sal die Heere jou help. Jy sal verstaan, jy sal nuchter bly, jy sal waaksam bly, in dit, en jy moet sal nie onder hierdie roervrouw Babylon inval nie. En dis ook om het so baie belangrik is, om nie te begin handel drijf met die woord nie. Dit is wat hulle gedoen het in die tempel. Hulle het begin handel drijf, en hulle het gevoel dis raag, want hulle het die kenmerk van Satan gehad, en dit is oor ons wat hy doen. Hy wil op altyd verhoog boog God, hy wil altyd maak asof hy God is, hy wil altyd voorgee dat hierdie reitom en eer en mag en dinge van God af is, terwyl dit nie is nie. En dit is waar onder die mens inval. Yes. I just want to read you um, yeah, in John 17. And this is this is very important to understand. Because sometimes we think we cannot be under the control. And when we are under the control of the devil, we God sees us not more anymore as the person, but Satan that rules in us. Now, when Jesus Christ uh, did his prayer here yeah, in uh, John 17, and he said, I kept everybody in your name. This is now verses 12. I just want to get it to verse 12 here. Revelation uh, John 17 verse 12. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I've kept. And none of them uh, is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, Jesus Christ revealed uh, Judas Iscariot as the son of perdition. Because he had this love of money. He was controlled by money. He, he, um, uh, 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 um, verloon. Um, uh, per, per, per um, <laughs> ach, seriously? <laughs> he delivered Jesus Christ to uh, the authorities be, uh, by, uh, by receiving money. And when we read in 2 Thessalonians 2, the Bible talks about the son of perdition that will sit in his reward. Thank you. He received a reward so that he can deliver Jesus Christ to the authorities by money. He received the physical money. And now we see in 2 Thessalonians 2 that is the same, the son of perdition that sits in betrayed. Thank you, thank you. He was, it, uh, Judas it betrayed Jesus uh, um, by money, by accepting money. And the moment when we do that, we are really under the power of Satan. And then we become the son, the man of perdition. So, Johannes 17 vers 12, Toe ek saam met hulle in die wereld was, het ek hulle in die naam bewaar, oor die wat hy my gegeet het, het ek gewaak. En die een van hulle het verloor en gegaan, die behalwe die seen van die verderf, so dat die skrif vervul sal word. En ons lees in, in, in Thessalonicense van die seen van die verderf. En nou kan ons hier so sien, Nie een van die ander disciples was behept met geld nie, behalwe Judas Iscariot. En dit het gemaakt, dat sy hart verlei kon word, dat hy kon die kenmerk van Satan kon anneem om Jesus Christus te verloon. Nou, dit is wat geld doen. Geld maak dat jy die Heere Jesus Christus verloon, dat jy nie meer 
hom volg soos wat jy al moet volg nie, want dit oorheers jou, dit beheer jou, jy aanvaar enige geld van enige kant af, en jy voel dis Godse seen, want dan het, dit was uit die skatkes, het hulle vir Judas Iscariot geld gegeen om vir Jesus te verloon, en dit is precies wat nog steeds gebeur, yes. en dit is wat ons moet waak en bid voor, en sê jyre, ek wil onder hierdie mag uitkom, ek wil verstaan waar oor dit gaan, yeah, and this is the main thing that the Lord wants to help us this morning, so that we can understand what is the earnest, the severity if we stay under a certain mindset, if we keep on with the pride of life, we st- we want to boast in ourselves, we want to pride in ourselves, we want to bring ourselves to the fore and let ourselves be counted and be in everybody's mouth, and the Lord, Word of God says, if everybody is speaking good of us, it, uh, this is what I did to the false prophet in the Old Testament. Everybody was speaking good of all the false prophets. But if you are preaching and ministering the truth of God, then not everybody will accept your word. Not everybody will speak well of you. Not everybody will exalt you. And if we keep on exalting ourselves, th- this is when we have difficulty to understand what the truth of the gospel is to separate our religious life uh, and, and our life from the greed and the lust of money. So, eindelijk as mys mooi daarna kyk, dat die valse evangelie um, maak jou trots, maak jou yes. oogmoedig, jy roem in jouself, jy roem in dit wat jy het, en die woord van waarheid verneder, yes. die woord van waarheid breek jou af, en dit is hoe kom my mens so sikkel om die woord van waarheid aan te neem. Yes. Want mens besef, dit gaan glad nie oor jouself nie, dit gaan glad nie om jouself te verhef om macht te hee, om te oorheers of enig iets nie. En dit is wat die valse evangelie doen. Dit maak asof um, de Satan sit om eindelijk in die tempel van God en geef voor dat hy God, God is. is. So dit um, boost jou, dit maak jou trots, dit maak jou oogmoedig, jy wees vir allemaal, allemaal begeer dit wat jy het, en dit is wat die mens wil hee, en dit is nou juist die rechte evangelie, die moeilike evangelie, yes. breek dit af. Yes, and this is the main thing, when you even read in Ezekiel 28, we're not going to go through that now, that he says also that this king of Tyre, he was in, he became rich from the ships that traveled over the seas, and this was this boastful, big um, town, um, and God says city, and God eventually destroyed Tyre because of their boastful ships and harbor, etc., etc., that brought in the wealth from other nations and also uh, a merchant and, and dealt with it, etc., etc. So here we can see that even in Ezekiel 28, the entire um, character of the devil is revealed here as well. He talks about how he was the perfection in Eden, etc. And how the Lord will destroy them. So at the end of the day, and this is what we also read in James 5. And I just want to read there um, James 5 as a concluding scripture. Yeah, In James 5. I can say for that as a mens hier die boodskap van voor tot achter wil deurgaan, gaan jy trend die hele bybel moet lees. Yes. En gaan lees dit, maak dit deel van jou leven, besef waar het gaan, en dan gaan somme al hier jou laste en dinge so lekker afval in jou leven, en aanvaar die woord van waarheid, dan gaan jy die Heere dien in gees en in waarheid. Amen, he says here, James 5 from verse 1 to 3, he he says, come now you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and the corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You will he- you have heaped up treasure in the last days. So here is a stern warning to us as children of God. Remember this is written to us as children of God. That we must be aware, not to be enticed and tempted to follow after the gospel that makes us feel good, that makes us proudful and boastful, because the gospel nowadays talks about uh, and ministers how we are, and we must become like, and we must be, and God wants um, to provide, and we must have. Now, at the end of the day, the Lord says, we must 
change our heart and mind. We must start reading the scripture and understand what the gospel is really about. Otherwise, at the end of the day, he says, your riches will eat your flesh like fire. And this is the, the wrath of God. This is at the end of the day what God will do to, to the harlot Babylon because she did it to people. God's going to do it to her as well. And mm -hmm. destroy her with fire. And this is what the Lord says. Come out. Don't be, get caught up in this mindset anymore. But start to change and say, Lord, I want to change. I understand something this morning. And my heart wants to change. I want to change so that I can have a inherit eternal life. Jacobus 5 vers 1, Kom nou jylle reikes, ween en heil oor jy lende, wat oor jylle kom. Jylle reikdom is bedorwe, en jylle kleren is dier die motte verniel. Jylle goud en silver is verroes, en hulle roes sal tot een getuienis teen jylle wees, en sal soos een vier jylle vlees verteer, jylle het skatte vergader in die laaste dag. En dit is wat hy ook vir die hoorvrouw Babylon sê, sy sal verbrand. En as jy saam met haar gaan, gaan jy verteer. Jy gaan verbrand, jy gaan in die eeuwige um, hel beland. <laughs> en dit is waar ons moet uitkom. Ons moet nie meer deel van het wees. Ons moet verstaan waar die evangelie gaan. Ons moet God dien en hom alleen dien. En dit wat hy vir jou wil voorsien, sal hy vir jou voorsien om jou aan te gaan in die evangelie. En die rest van dit is... Um, in elk geval nie van God af nie. Dit is om jezelf te verhoog en op te blazen en al die dinge. En dit gaan vergaan. Yes. Dit gaan verniel. Dit gaan verroes. Dit gaan tegen jou tel. Dit gaan tegen jou getuig. En ons wil nie dit heen nie. So. Because hmm. the end of that God will judge the material world. Because this material world is the cause of the tribulation that people are talking about. And this tribulation is more than... At least from Jesus Christ, it's 2,000 years, but it were there before as well. It has been revealed, and we've just read some of those scriptures. But what causes tribulation and sorrows in this world is because of the unrighteous mammon. And he and she, the city and mammon, it is so many ways to describe it, because it's so complex that we need to understand something today. And as children of God, be content with what you have. Serve the Lord in spirit and truth. Don't desire more. No, don't de just go out and say, I desire because my neighbor and because that and because I saw that. But we must really get a fervent, diligent relationship with the Lord so that He can help us to overcome the things of this world. Because it does. If the worries are there at the end of the month, we want to make our own plans. And it is there. The tribulation is there. The pressure is there. And we cannot get, we cannot just take our own life and get rid of it. Because <laughs> then you're going to get to a worse place than what you are right now. But God wants us, to, God wants us and He wants to help us so that we can understand something spiritually today. Sure, that is so mooi. Wij drukken is altijd daar. En vooral in van die maand. En het is wat... Almere ook nou nou gesê het, as die salaris nie inbetaal word nie, jy stress, dit is een druk. En dan wil my sê, wat jy planne maak, en dit is, een, dit is die verdrukking wat al 2000 jaar nog langer is dit, al waar hier die aarde is, dit is altyd een druk, en wat er uit druk kom bring, geld er uit druk kom bring. As jy vandag met die self moet eerlijk wees, wat is jou grootste drukking op hier die aarde? Dit is geld, dit is finansies, dit is die drukking wat jy gedierig dier moet deurgaan. En dis wat die Heere ons wil jy raak vergenoegd. Raak vergenoeg met wat jy het. Of jy nou min het en of jy nou baie het, wees vergenoeg. Moe nie meer gaan soek nie, moe nie begeer nie. Dis wat so mooi is volgend, my man sê, dis ek om die Heere sê, moe nie jou bierman so goed begeer nie. Moe nie gaan begeer nie. Want dit maak dat jy onvergenoegd raak met dit wat jy het. Wees vergenoeg met wat die Heere vir jou voorsien, dit wat jy het, dit wat jy mee moet aangaan. Dan gaan jy sommer vrede hee, en jy gaan aangaan in die evangelie bedien, en jy gaan een vredevolle verhouding met die vader hee, en jy gaan nie nie die oorlog wees die hele tyd nie, want wat veroorzaak die oorlog? Dis die onvergenoegdheid, dis die welis in die mens, dis die welis en drijf na meer, en dis wat die Heere ons wil leer. Raak ons slaaf in die goed dier, die Heere te dien. Jy kan net ons slaar ook van hierdie gedachte patroon dier die Heere te dien. Yes, and to understand that our life is about ministering the gospel. Yes. Not just to be content with nothing. A lot of people are 
to a certain extent content with what they have, but they don't serve the Lord. That also helps nothing. We need to understand that in doesn't matter what our circumstances is, we need to serve the Lord as if there is no problem. Yeah. Or if there is no abundance. And this is what Paul has said. I've learned when I had a lot, I've learned, and I've learned when there was nothing. What did he learn? To serve the Lord wow. in all his circumstances and not to be controlled by the abundance or the lack of everything. So that is why you are not able to die of the overflow or the tekort. Nie. Yes. You are not able to die. So the overflow of Babylon is not able to die of you. You believe of you have a tekort and of you have enough and you have too much, you have to die of the Lord. You have to die of the Lord. This is not just for the Lord to for die of the Lord to be able to die. Dit gaan oor die Heere voorsien vir jou, so dat jy die evangelie kan gaan bedien. Ja, and money makes us proud, it makes us boastful, if we are boastful people, and this is the problem, so most of the time we must just go and get and sort out our own character. Lord, I'm a boastful person, I'm a proud person. I still want to be in people's mouths, and I, people still want to, must, uh, moet my nog steeds hoog ach. Yeah. They must still carry me high. And that is when we struggle with the money thing. Yes. And sort out the character. And then the other world sort out as well. Yes, so, as you yes. character out is, as you don't have the of Satan, you always have to be more and more and more, and more, and more then you will not be able to do your behavior. And it is so awesome to think, that you can under the behavior, under the power, under the power, so that we free can be in you. Wow, that's quite amazing. It's something that we must work on from this day forward. We are already working a few days on this one. Yes. And just talking to the Lord. So let us start. This seed that has been sown today, it's something that must grow in our heart. But don't leave it. Go and pray over it. Go and yeah. read the scripture and say, Lord, I know I'm still guilty in a lot of these things. And today I understand something. I'm a proud, boastful person. Or whatever the case might be, or just plain greedy after money, I want a luxurious life, a smooth sailing life. And then as you are talking and praying and taking up this life of you with the Lord, eventually He will sort things out in your life. But Amen. you must work with Him. Amen. Ons wil net yes. saam met die Heere waar. Yes. Prijs die Heere. Ons hoop die boodskap het vir jou ook so baie beteken soos vir ons, dat maal en ons al vir die week, dit werk, Daar is saad groei. <laughs> dit moet een boom raak in ons leven om werkelijk te verstaan, om werkelijk los te kom, vir genoeg te wees, die evangelie te bedien, net een verhouding met die Heere te wees, en vredevolle leven te leven met hom, en um, siele te win vir die evangelie, en um, ja, so ek denk dat dit ons allemaal sy hart in die los gemaakt, want my man Praise het is een heerlijkheid loof die Heere. Amazing. Jylle moet een Praise lekker dag heen. Ja, jy so reen het lekker, so ja, prijs die Heere, mag jy een geseende dag heen. En jylle moet lekker blij, en ons sien mekaar seker woensdag aan, ons sal jy op hoogte hou. Lekker aan, dag, bye bye.